All right, everyone, here we go. Today we are going to make those values that we found yesterday hopefully make sense and what they represent. So yesterday we found the mean, the median, the mode. We found the interquartile range, the range, the quarter one, quartile one, quartile three, blah, 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 blah. Today we're going to like make those make sense on some examples. Um, so my kids, I got to get them to bed by eight o'clock. So I have about 20 minutes here with you. Uh, example one. Oh, and here's the standard for the keystones. Um, let's see, example one. The following data are the heights of 40 students in a statistics class. All right, so 40 students in a statistics class. What is the minimum? Well, something to notice is that these are already in order, so that is going to save us a ton of time. If they weren't in order, you would have to put them in order. Um, and yeah, that happens, um, but you know, you'll be okay. So the minimum height right height is 59 inches the maximum height there's that the maximum height is 77 now i need to find that quartile one and quartile two so i always find this first after i do my low and high so i'm going to go there's 40 kids so i'm going to cross off 19 on each side are you ready one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So that leaves me with two middle numbers. So the quartile number two, you add them and then you divide by two. In other words, like what's in the middle of sixty-six and sixty-six? Well, if you need to add them, um, what is that? That's one thirty-two. And when you divide by two, you end up getting another sixty-six. Okay, and I'll get my calculator up here on the side just in case you do want to see those keystrokes on the calculator, please make sure that you um, hit enter after adding. I saw somebody yesterday when I was working on their homework with them um, who did not adhere to that and it kind of cost them the answer. Okay, so this is my median, which is also called my quartile two, which is 66. So the middle number, if you lined all the students up, the middle student in that line would be 66 inches. So now I'm gonna erase all those other tally marks because it's really annoying to look at because I already used those. Um, I'm also gonna erase that box because I just think, you know what I saw yesterday, it really messed with kids. Um, so remember we can include these 66s because they weren't actually my median. All right, now I have to find the middle of this first half. So there's the first half. I think there's 20 in there, right? So I'm gonna count off um, nine on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what is in the middle of 64 and 65? Well, if you add them and then you divide by two, you get 64 and a half. If you don't believe me, here it is over here, 64 and 65 divided by two. This is your lower, me lower median, the middle of your first half. So it's called quartile one. So 64.5. Um, and then we're going to do that in quartile two. So it's the middle of the upper half of people. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what's in the middle of 77? If you add them and then divide by two, well, another 70 is in the middle there. That's your quartile three. So this is the middle of the top half of students in that stats class. The ultimate range is the high, so like all the way, the range is how far from here to here. So that is your maximum of 77 minus your minimum of 59. And we end up with 18, okay? So the students, like, you know, you could have a really short student here. The tallest student is 18 inches taller than that short student. The interquartile range I taught you yesterday is Q3 take away Q1. In other words, it is the difference between this and this. So how much do these differ here? Okay, so we do Q3, which is 70, take away Q1, which is 64.5, and we end up with 5.5. So the middle half of students only differ by 5.5 inches. Now you need to know how to construct a box and whisker from that information. I'm gonna highlight the important numbers. You'll use your minimum, your maximum, your Q1, 
your Q2, your Q3. Those are the ones that make it up. They're called the five number summary. All right, so you will draw a long number line, which I've done for you, on which you're going to record all your data. Sometimes students tend to struggle with this. So what I do is um, like take your range and divide it by 10 and round it. And that might help you decide what you're going to round by. Okay, now let's see. I know I need to get from 59 all the way to 70. No, up to 77. So I am going to, what is that range? That range was 18. I'm going to skip by twos, okay? So I'm going to start at 58, 60, 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, 72, 74, um, 76, 78. That's going to fit everything I need. In fact, I'm going to throw those numbers more in the middle of my chart. Let's see, right there. And that 58, I don't know why I wrote that 58 so funny. It should be like right under there. And it might have been easier had I like not squished them together so much. But um, so I just really quick took my range of 18 and divided it by 10. I was like, oh, OK, I'll skip by twos. That's what I did. That You don't have to do that. I mean, for all you, you could have taken, you could have skipped by probably by ones and made it fit now that I'm looking at it. But that's OK. It doesn't really matter as long as it's not too squunched. OK, so here's how you do it, everybody. Plot your minimum and plot your max like this. Your minimum was 59 and your maximum was 77. Okay, so there they are. Um, mark the center with, um, center your line with your quartile two number. Sorry, oh, did not mean to do that. Quartile two, mark the center of your plot line with your quartile two. So what was our quartile two? Uh, 66, it was messy, but it was 66. Sorry about that. Okay, now go ahead and connect those. I like to see them connected. And then just make your dots really stick out. Okay, um, now take the values of your um, first and third quartiles and plot them with a short vertical line. Um, and okay, so we had 64.5. So it would have been right real close to 64. So right there. And the other one was, what was quartile? Three, 70. So 70 is right there. And you're going to put a box around that. There's a good looking box. Then you put another line at your Q2. And that is a box and whisker. You want to say hi to my students? Hi, students. This step five says create a box that connects the um, Q, the first and third quartile which we've already drawn, this pen, it's not wanting to work. Mine is missing and or dead. And then this helps you um, have a more visually like understanding of what was going on, okay? So um, what you haven't learned yet, or what you learned in sixth grade, is that chunk of items in this highlighted area represents 25% of all your data. This represents another 25, this represents another 25, and this represents another 25. Kids can um, sometimes struggle with that, but it doesn't represent like the, the, the spacing is just how far spaced out each fourth of your data is. So you can see that the upper portion of your students and their heights is a lot um, more spread out than like this 25%. So like the same amount of kids fit inside of there, it's just that they're a lot like closer in height. The same amount of kids fit in there as in there as well, except they're more spread out, like the difference in their heights. Looks that like makes you sense. drew fangs there. Did that make sense though? Made what sense to me, Haley. Okay. Um, so I skip by twos. Everything looks good there. So now we're going to try just doing one um, without all the guiding steps. This one is not in order. Oh, good. You're here. You can look over my shoulder and make sure I get them in order. Kids hate it when things aren't in order. Okay. Um, 25.5, I think, is the lowest. Oh, that's what we're doing. Gotcha, gotcha. They have to be in order. They're not going to get it right. What's mm -hmm. next? Mm, 40s. 45. Okay. Oh, there's grades on tests, so hopefully there are not too many of the smaller ones. 65. So this is great on my double vision here. Any other 60s? How about 70s? 76. 76. Okay, so the grades are getting better. 78. 78. Another 78. Another 78. 79. Okay. 
and another, another 79. 79. And 80. Mm-hmm. Um, 81. And 83. To another 81 over Wait, there. Wait, 81 and 81, and then 83? Mm-hmm. Where'd my other 81 and then my 83? And I gotta shrink this down before I lose it. Oh, no. Oh, man. Look at those skills. Okay, what's next? What's after 84.5. Wait, I can tricky. cross that right, right? 84.5. And then an 85, they're really... Okay, where's that at? I'm going to cross right them there. off. 88, 88 is next. And then mm-hmm. I see an 89. Mm-hmm. And then I see a 90. Mm-hmm. And another 90. Goodness, this is helpful. Thank you. And then... Yeah, right, your second 90. Oh, my bad. And then 98. This is not good on my double. 398. They're going to be really mad at me tomorrow when they have to do this in class. Another 98. Did anybody get 100? I did. No, no. No. I don't see any. Okay. okay oh, there's an. Okay. So there they are. I guess I need to count them. Let's count them up here how many there were. Mm hmm. I got 22. 22. Okay, I got them all. All right, so I always do that to verify. All right, next, uh, the minimum, 25.5. That's a really bad grade. It's not the best. And then the highest is 98. 98. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good grade. Okay, so I actually find the quartile 2. That's the the middle of all those numbers. So it's going to be somewhere in here, the middle. All right, so we're just going to cross off, I guess, how many did we say there was? 22? 22. So I'll cross off 10 at a time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That leaves me with two middle numbers. So okay. what is in the middle of 88, 81 and 81? 81. Right. It's an, another 81. If you guys aren't sure, remember you add them together. This always works. And then divide them by 2 after you add. So you get 162 and you divide. So 81. Now Q1. Okay, this is the hard part. Remember, um, you kind of just squiggle this right in the middle. All right. And the, these were not part of our median. Like it wasn't actually our median. So what we're going to do is we're going to just erase all the all the extra little things that we just did that's why i made them really tall okay and now we have to find the middle of the lower half that's our q1 the middle of the lower scores so there's 11 and on this side there's 11 oh, yes, on, yes, so yes. we're going to cross off five oh good so it's a clean cut 78 so that is the middle of the lower scores Okay, now Q3. Eighty-nine. That is the middle of the higher scores. The ultimate range was the highest grade of ninety-eight. Take away the lowest grade of twenty-five-five. That's like how much your test differed by, which is what. Oh my goodness, seventy-two point five. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling. Seventy-two point five. That sounds right. The interquartile range, remember, guys, that's the where how far the middle 50 people are spread out. So that's Q3, 89, take away Q1, 78. So this one, take away that one. Um, what is that? 11. 11. So they only differed by 11 percentage points, the middle 50%. Okay, so I have to fit 25 all the way up to 98. So range divided. I can skip by sevens. That'll work. That's a weird thing to skip by, though. But I'm going to skip by... I'm going to skip by, I don't think I skip by fives, it'll work. I'll try. What if I do 20? I'm just going to count. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95. Okay, good. I'll skip by fives. That'll work. That'll fit. And they, those are normal looking numbers. Okay, so 25. I need to change the size of that pen. That's so annoying. 25, 30. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, if I go slow, it doesn't drag, 60, 
65. I don't know if it's dying or what. 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95 up to 100. So these numbers down here aren't necessarily on your plot. They're just a number line so you can draw your dots above it. And that dot's not really there. <clears throat> All right. So now we need to plot our lowest number. So 25, 5 will be like right here. And our highest dot needs to go all the way up to 98. So like here. Connect those so you have a nice straight line. Okay. And then darken those in. All right, there's that. I guess I can do this now. And then let's see, what other numbers do we need? The 80, let's just plot 78 next. So I did that one, I did that one. Let's plot 78. So 78 is like here. 81 is like here. Oh, wow, that's why they're so tight-knit. Look at that. And then 89 is here. So the, the score, I'm gonna use the word clustered. The scores are super clustered in that area. Like a lot of people scored in here, a, a, a decent amount of people. Oh, I need that to be a box. Slow. That's not the shape I wanted. Oh, this pen. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay, I'm just gonna freehand a box because I think my, the pen is just dying. I wanted it to snap into place, but it wouldn't. Okay, there. Okay, so it is weird. It looks like, it looks visually like there's more people here, but that is not the case. There are not more people there. 25% of the students fit here, 25% of the students fit here, 25% fit here, and 25% fit here, okay? All right, now, knowing that each part holds 25% of the data, uh, answer this question. The lowest 25% of scores is between and something else I didn't mention that I like to do that you don't have to do. I like to put my numbers on here so I don't have to keep looking up above. What was this one? 78. 78. This was 81. 81. This was 89. 89. And this was... 98. Okay. I like putting my numbers there so I can just see it now. Twenty. The lowest 25% of the test takers is between 25.5 and... What were, what were the... What's the other one? 78. Uh, 78. Yeah. So the lowest 25% of the people. How many kids were in this class? I can't even remember. It's 22 20, members. Weren't there 22 kids? Okay. 50%. Mm -hmm. um, Hi, sweetie. Fif I, go ahead. Oh, I'm recording, but go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay. The middle 50% of the data is between... The middle 50% is this area here. So the middle 50% is between 78 and 89, so much more tight-knit here, closer. The cutoff for being in the top 25%, so if you're in the top 25%, the cutoff is an 89. So if you got an 89 or higher, you're in the top 25% of the class. Um, the data is the most spread out in the lower 25%, so it is the most spread out, but see how long that line is? Does that make sense if I say it that way? Mm -hmm. See how... Like, this is way more spread out than any of those. So the, that's where, and that's really because, you know, somebody scored really, really poorly. Um, the data is least spread out in this area between 78 and 81. I should ask her and see if she, because I, I can explain it to her then. Uh, and I should say the 25% spread there. And plot the mean above the box and whisker plot. Is it higher or lower than the median? Oh. I'm going to need to get my calculator. Okay. This is, do you want to go start reading to them and then I'll be out? I have a lot of adding to do. Okay. To find the, oh, if you guys forgot from yesterday, I'm trying to find the mean, which means I have to add every single item up here. 98 and 78 and 68 and... You want to read them to me? Mm -hmm. I'm at 81. Oops, I didn't. 81. 
89, 88, 88, 88, 76, 76, 65, 65, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 45, 
Let's check them out. The boys, the lowest one was 66. And the boys, a 66 all the way up to 74. I'm going to connect them. Um, and then they have their Q1 at 67. They have their Q3 at 72. And they have their median or their quartile 2 at 68 and a half. Okay. Putting my box around Q1 and Q3. Okay, so this one represents the boys. The girls all draw in black. The minimum is 61, so this one's gonna have to go higher. I just did that so I could visually see it. Um, and the girls go all the way up to 70. Okay, and just move it up higher. Connect them. So we already knew the girls were going to be shorter overall than the boys, that's why that line is more towards the left. The Q1 is 63. Q2 is 65. Oh. Um, Q3 is 68. I think I did pretty good there. Connect those middle ones of the box. There's hence the box and the whiskers. Makes it look, shows you how your data is spread out. Okay, so the girls are a lot more like evenly spread out, like each chunk is semi a lot more equal than the boys were. Okay, now which class or which group, I should use the word group. Which group has the higher median? That's the boys. Um, that is this versus this. So definitely the boys. Which group's middle 50% is more spread out? Ooh, that's hard. Okay, so the girls go from 63 to 68. That's a spread of five. And the boys go from 67 to 72. They're actually the same. Um, middle 50%, they're actually both a spread of five inches. So they're, there's, they're both like the middle 50%, they're both spread out by five inches. What group's lowest 25% is less spread out? So we are talking about the lower 25%, this versus this. Which one is less spread out? Well, definitely the boys, because the girls go from 61 to 63. That's a spread of two. The boys go from 66 to 67, and that's just the spread of one, so the boys. Which group has the higher quartile one value? Quartile one value is here or here, so that will be the boys. Which group has the smallest range? Well, we already did the range up here. Um, actually, believe it or not, the boys have the smaller range because the boys only ranged by eight inches from the shortest to the tallest. The girls, remember, they varied by nine inches. So the girls were actually more, their range overall was a lot bigger. Okay. Now your review. Find the slope. The cost of a school banquet. Oh, so word problems. It's all right. We're going to just read it. You go to a school banquet. It's $95 and it's $15 for each person who comes. Okay. So you, this is a flat rate and this is the one that like determines. This one doesn't change. The $15 goes up or down like that one could be $15 if only one person comes or $30 if two people come or 45 if three people come. That makes 15, positive 15. That's your slope, okay? And not only that, it says for each. That means it's like $15. Why can't I write? Oh, the pen turned off. That means it's like $15 per person. And so you can see there, there's your slope. Oh, up 15 over one, up 15 over one. Find the slope. Felicia Johnson paid $125 to join a tennis club. This is looks like it's just a one-time fee to me. A one-time fee. Um, and now she has to... Oh, look, she has more to pay. $5 every time she uses a tennis court. So that $5, that's a positive $5 she has to pay. That happens every time 
That's a huge indication. That's the one. So it could be 5, 10, 15, 20. That's the one that varies. That's the one that changes. Okay? The 125 is a one-time fee. Roman paid 150 to, to join a handball club. Well, that looks like a one-time fee to me. He just paid it. But now, look, he has to pay $15 every time he uses a handball court. So that $15... That's your slope. That so positive fifteen would be your slope, because it goes up fifteen dollars every time he uses the court. So we'll, our slope is a positive fifteen, and what it represents is fifteen dollars for every one use. Now this one's different. In 1980, the average price of a home, and I don't even know where that is, was ninety-seven thousand dollars. Okay, that was five years before I was born, folks. By 1986, Mrs. Langelli was one. The average price of a home was 109, 109,000, okay? Just so you guys know, my husband and I bought a very tiny, tiny, tiny home in like 2000. What is this? <laughs> Lily's nine. In like, I don't know, 2010. And my husband and I, it's a super tiny home. We paid like $89,000 for it. And now that house just sold for 150 for somebody else. So it's crazy what's going on with home prices. All right, I just sound like an old lady. So this one's different because I'm giving you points. See how it was like, the this was the year and the price, and then the year, and then the price. So this time I gave you two points instead of like a story. So you have to do your skeleton framework and do maybe um, 97,000 minus 109,000. And then let's see, so we are doing this one first. That'd be 1980 at Y over X, okay? Over 1986. Oh, come on, please, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna grab my calculator because it is late and I don't feel like redoing my video. 97, boom, boom, boom. Minus 109. Okay, so it's negative 12,000 over 1980. Take away 1986 is negative 6. So your slope is negative 12,000 divided by negative 6, positive $2,000. So what the heck does that mean? That means it's going up $2,000 for every year. So you are looking to go up 2,000 over one, up 2,000 over one and every year. A particular property value would increase by $2,000 a year. Crazy, or at least the average home there. All right, so today's goal, can you graph a box and whisker and do you understand like the whole 25% uh, information being stored in each individual part and then being able to compare two of them? Um, while I was doing my note, I just actually thought about like I did not talk about um, how to predict unknowns using box and whiskers, but um, we'll get there. I'm not scared about the timeline or anything, so we'll just add that into another lesson. All right, have a great night or day or whatever you're doing. <laughs>